On my last video, I talked about the SSL 4000 plugin and I used a tool to analyze the EQ curve of that plugin. And this is the EQ curve analyzer version two by Berton. And that led to this following question. Hi Chris, could you explain how did you connect the SSL 4000 plugin with the Berton EQ curve analyzer? Yeah, totally. I'm gonna show you exactly what I did by using this free plugin to analyze any EQ curves of any plugins, whether they are stock plugins out of Cubase or your own DAW, third-party plugins, and even analog gear, which I'm also gonna show you in this video. And if you're a Cubase Pro user, I'm also gonna show you something very cool and unique that not a lot of people know about. I'm gonna use the routing feature out of a channel to compare the EQ curves of two different plugins on the same channel. And this is gonna be quite cool. Okay, so stick around for this one. Now, this is not a sponsored video whatsoever. I've been uh, using this plugin for quite some time. Um, and I'm gonna leave the link down below if you wanna go and download it. And again, it's uh, free, okay? So that's pretty cool. But you can also donate any amount you want to put your hands on this plugin. And that is if you want to encourage the plugin developers. Now, the first thing you'll need to do once you have this plugin installed is to insert it on a channel before the plugin you want to analyze, okay? And this part of the plugin will act as a tone generator, okay? That will feed the plugin and then you will have to insert a second instance of the same plugin that will then show you a visual representation of the EQ curve of the plugin you're analyzing. And that can be very useful for learning purposes. Uh, what happens when you play around with the EQ knobs, you know, how the plugin is going to react as far as the EQ curve goes. Um, this plugin will show you everything you need to know. But the minute I'm done analyzing a plugin, I throw this plugin away. So I only use these types of plugins, uh, whether it's this uh, EQ curve analyzer or plugin doctor, for example, for research or as a learning tool, but not as a mixing tool whatsoever. Everything is going to rely on these two ears. So with that said, let's keep this plugin open. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open the Paltech EQ and I'm going to analyze the EQ curve of this plugin. And right away, I can see right away that I have probably like a couple of dB boost. That explains a lot of things because when I use this plugin, I can sense and hear a difference the minute I insert this Paltec EQ on a track. So it does boost the sound, which affects, of course, uh, the way I'm going to hear that sound. And there's also a small roll off on the top end. OK, so this is what I have by default without playing with the knobs whatsoever. And the minute I play around with the knobs, there you go. I'm going to see the results right away on the, uh, the the EQ Curve Analyzer plugin. Now, I made a full video talking about the Paltec EQ. I'm going to leave the link down below if you want to watch it. So this is the famous Paltec EQ trick where you boost the lows and also attenuate the lows and you kind of get a dip in the low mid, depending on the low frequency value. OK, so that cut is going to move around. And I actually have a visual representation of that cut. OK, so this is actually pretty cool. Now let's boost the top end and do the same, a bit of attenuation. The attenuation selection, let's put it to five. And uh, let's bring that down to five also. Play with the bandwidth, which is basically the Q factor. And there you go. So I can easily see how this EQ behaves when I move the knobs, since I have a representation of the EQ curve. So what if I want to compare, let's say, this version of the Paltec EQ with the one in Cubase, okay? So I'm gonna reset those values to its original state. And this is where this little trick that I have for you if you're using Cubase Pro is gonna come in hand, all right? So I'm gonna open my channel settings window, okay? I have the Paltech EQ. Now, this channel is a stereo channel, and what I'm about to show you needs to be done using a stereo channel. Now, I also have an instance of the EQ P1A, which is the Steinberg's or Cubase, which is a stuck plugin in Cubase that emulates a Paltech EQ, basically. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna activate it, and then I'm gonna go back into my channel settings window. At the bottom, I'm gonna click on routing. Look at that. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't know about, okay? 
and it's going to be very useful in our case. Okay, right now, again, I'm on a stereo channel. I have a bunch of plugins where we're going to look at later on. But now, uh, the Poltec EQ is right here, and the EQP1A by Steinberg is right underneath, okay? And they are going to the left and right channel. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to route the UAD version of the plugin to the left side of the channel. So I'm going to click right here, and I'm going to put it to mono, first of all. I don't want this plugin to be stereo. And by default, it is going to be routed to the left side of the channel. So I'm good. Now for the EQP1A, again, I'm going to do the same. Select mono. And I'm going to select it again. Click on it again. Open routing editor. And I'm going to click at the right arrow to bring the routing to the right side of the channel. Click on OK. Okay, and I'm going to go back to my EQ Curve Analyzer plugin. And there you go. Now, the blue line is the plugin on the right side, which in our case is the EQP1A by Steinberg. And the line in green will be the one routed to the left side of the channel. So the UAD version of the Poltec EQ. And you can see the difference right away without playing around with uh, the knobs. Uh, by default, we have that boost, that 2 dB boost we get with the UAD version and a bit of a roll off on the top end. And on the uh, Steinberg side, it's pretty uh, up to level. Okay, it stays at zero dB, but there's kind of a bump, okay, kind of a high shelf. Uh, at the uh, the top end of the frequency range. So it kind of does the opposite in a way and no 2 dB boost. So this is the difference we have when activating both plugins. And uh, if I want to compare how they react, let's uh, just uh, boost and attenuate uh, by 5 dBs on both plugins. So they have a similar curve, okay, but not starting at the same place. Okay, so this is the difference between the two. Now, is it going to be audible? Probably just a bit. So it just gives you an idea on the differences. The rest doesn't matter. You know, when you use the plugin when mixing, you use your ears, you like what you hear, you're good to go, and that's it. Okay, this time around, let's open a tape saturation plugin. All right, so uh, let's go with the uh, UAD Studer. Activate it, and there you go. Without touching anything, right off the bat, this is the EQ curve I have with this plugin. Okay, a bit of a bump on the low end, um, kind of a you know a slight cut, you know, in the um, the lows, touching the low mids a bit, a bit of a cut at around 150 hertz or so, a bump in the low mids, and a dip on high frequency. So this is what I have with this plugin, with the settings it's at right now. So if I bring the tape to 250, you know, this is what I get. It's slightly different with just a bit of differences in the EQ curve. If I put it to 900, you know, again, another dip, pretty, pretty close. Now there's a bit of a bump on the, uh, the top end when I set it up to GP9 and a bump on the low mid. So uh, that explains also the different types of tones we have when selecting these different tapes. Okay, here's an 1176. Let me play around with uh, some parameters. I'm gonna add a lot of input level, bring down the output, balance that out. And right away, you can see the change in the EQ curve, a bit of a bump on the top end and also on the low end of the signal. And if I play around with the attack, let's bring the attack slower with a fast release. Look at that. It changes the whole uh, EQ curve, which is quite interesting. But again, I have a lot of gain reduction going on. Okay, But it just gives you an idea of the uh, change in tone of this type of compressor, which is based on an analog compressor, okay? And talking about analog gear, let's try this out with my VTRC. Uh, so the cool thing with Cubase, when we mix with analog gear, we set the analog gear into audio connection. And then from my plugin list, if I go down to the Steinberg folder and under the external plugins, I'm going to have the list of the analog, the analog gear that I listed under my connection configuration. And the one that I'm looking for is VTRC, okay? And that's it. I make sure it's inserted between the two instances of the EQ Curve Analyzer plugin. 
and I'm good to go. Now, the difference you'll get when analyzing analog gear, uh, you will see like the waveform moving a bit. That's normal. This is the behavior of analog gear, which is not static, it's non-linear, it has noise and distortion. Okay, so that's why we have this type of visual. Right off the bat, you know, when I open and work with the VTRC and nothing is going on right now, I have a bump at around 50 hertz, which is quite nice. So it adds to the warmness of the unit, you know, from what I can tell. That is due to that little bump that I have at around 50 hertz. And from that point, I can just play around, boost some frequencies, cut some, you know, do what needs to be done. And it's going to show right away in the EQ curve analyzer, which is quite nice. So that is a good way to learn about your analog gear that you own, you know, and look at the, uh, the EQ curves from that gear. So that is pretty, pretty cool and not that complicated to do if you work within Cubase. Now, this is not going to be a full replacement to a plugin like Plugin Doctor. Uh, as far as the EQ curve goes, for sure, it can be a very good replacement and a very good alternative to work with. However, there's no dynamic or harmonic analysis like we have on Plugin Doctor. So this will only show you the EQ curve of a plugin or analog gear. Okay. If you want to know more about the classic analog type plugins, you can start by watching my last video talking about the SSL 4000E. Until next time, take care, my friend, and see you.